Hey, today I'm going to show how to build a backend with N8N for a mobile app, Expo React, and, and I'm using AI for the front end. So today we're building a complete API backend with N8N for this mobile app. It's going to have AI tools, so you get to see how to use AI tools to reduce a ton of coding. They're using the AI agent in N8N, but they're not the buzzwordy agents that are still coming to be. But these are real tools and real workflows that can really decrease your work in a way that you used to have to do a lot of if-else statements. And I show a little bit of mobile app stuff, but this isn't about that. Um, we're going to focus on the back end so you can see how you can save time, but then how to let the AI build the front end when needed. So we're going to jump into the N8N back end here. Basically, as normal, I'm using N8N to build an API. These web hooks are really just APIs. They'll return um, results. Now, one of the key patterns here is going to be AI agents. Now, they call them that, but honestly, they're just LLMs with tools. And this is a very normal workflow today in code. And OpenAI has been doing this for quite some time now. This can really decrease the amount of logic they're writing if else statements and let the LLM use the tools they built. So tools are like classes. They do something, they return something. And the AI knows how to use these tools or classes. Now, <clears throat> before we go into that, I'll show you some of the front end for the mobile app. Again, nothing special. It just shows a few screens on how they can kick off their meal plan and be like, this is what I want to eat all week. How then it returns results, how they can see those meal plans for the week. And then eventually chat with them, which this API will do in the middle, and give feedback. So eventually, every time they make a new pl meal plan for the week, it, it just grows and understanding a little bit more what they want, what they like. So in this case, let's jump into the kickoff. The kickoff is the API endpoint that will start the whole process. So this is how a mobile app would talk to it. And in Postman, we'd send a request saying, hey, this is the type of meal plan I want. I'm going to send my user ID and we go into the system and it sends it. So Superbase is the back end here that we're using because we're taking advantage of the AI knowing how to build mobile apps and integrate with Superbase. Superbase takes care of our authentication, which is very helpful. And then it starts to integrate all the permissions and roles and things. It, it just does it for us, including events. So if something can happen one place, send a webhook to N8N in another place. And so in this case, this person who's logged in will kick off a goal. That goal will then kick off making meals and then a shopping list. When they start this kickoff process, the AI agent, which is a tool agent, will then say, okay, I'm trying to do what this prompt says. And in doing so, I'm going to use my tools to do this. Now, it's really solid, actually. You got to find that balance between, hey, let me make something just for this. Let me hit another API, let me trigger an event and just do one thing versus, hey, I'm using it here and let it figure it out. So you got to always find that balance. In this case, <clears throat> the prompt tells it to, you, you're here, you're making this weekly meal plan for someone. Here's everything they're thinking and liking and want, want to consider in their meal plans. So the AI knows to save the meal. So again, this API could have done this right away, but sorry, not that one, this one. So the goals come in and, and they could have just saved it. I could have put it here, over here, and, and just dump it into the goals. That's fine. <clears throat> I might even do that because it would save a few seconds. So I'll probably do that after the video. But then as the API is processing that data or the AI agent, it will say, okay, I see what they want for meals. I'm going to then make their first weekly meal plan. And then it knows to save it to here. And here's what's really cool. This is another workflow. So in that case, that workflow... I get to organize some complex stuff there, even some not so, so complex stuff. So when we save the first meal, it just puts the data into here, which then will put the data into the database and return back a response, a consistent response pattern. And in doing so, then it's done and it goes back to doing its work. It's okay, I have their meal goals, I've saved them. I made their weekly meal plan, I saved it. Now it knows, hey, I'm going to now do a shopping list. And it's not because these are ordered a certain way. It's just how tools work. I can have another one here that says get their feedback. And, and that's probably what I'm going to do because that's actually a good one. But I'm not going to put in the kickoff one. So this one's a little bit more interesting because it actually does more here by having another LLM moment. And a good example here, too, is I could replace this with Grok and get speed out of Grok. I think this could be pretty fast, too. So... 
then that LLM says, oh, they're trying to make a shopping list. I'm going to take what they gave me for a meal plan for the week. I'll create the shopping list, and then I will do some other stuff. Again, this is just stuff in Superbase. You could use Postgres. And then at this point, it's done. It returns a response saying, this is what we got for you for this week. And then the UI would show that. Okay, so when the person hits the update, the chat moment, this app will have a little bit of chat where they can be like, I want to remove pizza from Friday or I want to add something. Again, it's just another route where, and I think I might have it in Postman. In Postman, we're going to show feedback. I don't have the API update one here. But it just sends in a request saying, you know what, I, I want to move pizza to Friday. And when it gets the request, please add a night of pizza to the week, whatever. It then says, okay, <clears throat> they want me to do something here. And the prompt is smart enough to know, hey, this is my role. This is what I'm doing. And we don't put it here because, again, it's so easy to make these things and separating them helps. You, you find the balance there. You don't want to go too far and you don't want to separate every little thing at the same time. You want something to be consistent. It's it's a funny balance here, and I'm still figuring it out because I've gone from code where you think about everything being single responsibility, but then, and that's what these kind of are, but then you go into this and you're like, wow, this API could do like 10 things because the AI agent knows how to handle everything. It is a funny balance or a learning one. So now it this AI says, okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go get the, the meal plan for this week. And this tool says, hey, this is what I do. Give me the meal ID and I'll get you the related meal plan. In the API request should come the meal ID. So now it knows how to get the meal ID. It goes and gets it. It says, okay, this person wants pizza. I see the meal ID. I see the meal for the week, the weekly plan. And it adjusts it accordingly. And it knows how to do that because I put this other tool here, which happens to just be uh, a Postgres query. And this other tool then will update the database with their latest meal plan. So you see how I'm putting the meal plan in here. So now <clears throat> I say to the API, let's go do that values to update. And I, I give it there. All right. So that's nice. I can basically use the results of the AI in my database insert or update. And that's really key. And then finally, it will say I'm done. And then it goes back. Now let's look at something here. Structured output is another really great feature, and we're forcing the AI to consistently put something in a structured output. It will fail if it can't do it. Sometimes it doesn't do it and fails, which i rather have, or I could have another LLM to say, hey, let's just make sure this is working. So just, it's a win overall. I have done it in code before with other applications, and it works okay, structured output, but it sometimes limited the um, models I could use, but now I can use other models that I normally couldn't use to get really consistent structured output. So this structured output feature is just really key. And then finally, I return a response from that particular uh, item. Now, this one doesn't say response because I actually made the structured output say that. So I could have gone either way, honestly. So that is another example of an AI that API that does these things, uses the tools, which are all just a bunch of queries, and then gets the job done and returns the results. Now let's look at the feedback. All right, so the feedback one is, is really nice as well. The feedback API will say somewhere in the app, the user is on their weekly meal plan and they're clicking, I have a comment about this, or feedback, like I didn't like the tuna cakes. It sends the feedback into the system and the LLM will say, hey, is this positive, is this negative? And then it will use the structured output to return positive or negative. So again, a big win with this structured output. And when it gets the results, now you'll see I have a few here because I always, I love the speed of Grok and it's great for it going through ideas and it's good to use live so then we save the feedback to superbase and we give a response let's send that with postman just so we can see something and then i want to show as we send this the execution area because that's really key in all of this it's a big win so now we sent that feedback in postman in uh, superbase but what we get out of all of this which is so handy is that we get this execution history and in this execution history, we can easily see what has happened, what has gone wrong. I had some tests go wrong. Oh, it looks like I did have the feedback in there. I'll have to like grab that one. I'm going to copy that, and we'll go back in a moment and look. So <clears throat> now, as a support person, as a builder of an application, I come in, I can see what went wrong. I can see the shape of the payload that came in and then use those elements as I build it. This is just amazing stuff. So I could 
copy it to my editor. I could then start using that input to basically figure out how to build this thing or what went wrong. In this case, nothing went wrong. It said, okay, look it, I've done your thing. Here's the output. It even has logs to show you how it got to that particular place. Now you might have several other tools in here that help it to go through the flow. And, and this is just amazing. I show you the feedback, but I'm also trying to show you how you can use the executions to build and troubleshoot your whole like code system. We see that there's a logic chain to do this. And that is just so helpful for me as a developer to know what flow did it go through? How did it get to the answer? What am I doing wrong? Is it repeating something? Is it missing something? So we've shown the kickoff, the updates, the feedback, but how do we use the feedback? All right, let's go look at that. Now, when a person asks for a meal plan, a meal update, in here, I'm going to first get their particular feedback. And you'll see I copied this from a past execution because I probably didn't save my work, which is something I do. Too many tabs. So you see, I just had to fix my query parameter. And basically, now we get a random uh, amount of feedback. There's not enough there to be huge, but we don't need a ton of data. So now, and I have a couple of repeats, but whatever. So now when the request comes in to update a weekly meal plan, the system will first go get the feedback. So feedback, all feedback agent. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two guys here and copy them. And then I will go to one of my other tools to just duplicate it. And this one's a good one. And notice they're not active. You don't have to activate them. Meals, feedback, get. Good luck naming, I'm not good at it. So now this comes in and we're gonna say, here you go. And we don't need that. And we might as well save this because I think it will be a response. So now the question becomes, how do I get the particular information I need, the user ID? Don't know if this, we got lucky and it came in. Yeah, it already came in. So now in this one, I'm gonna say, you know what? This user ID isn't coming from the body of something before, it's coming from here. And like I showed you a moment ago, I could just say execute query, oops, first JSON query and then user ID, oops, query. So by default, when the AI tool uses your external workflow, it sends in a query. I want the user ID, which again, I controlled by telling it to send that in. And we can look at that in a moment. And then we have the feedback and then we have the response and this one has a response. Now this response is wrong. So let's go fix that. And the response would be all feedback. So let's see if we can run it. And then if we go into here, and this one always gets a little tricky. No, okay, so that's okay. I pinned some old data here. It has an old user uh, UID, and then I want to give it the new user ID and save it, and then run it again. And then we get some feedback, so we can pin that for a moment just to make our life a little easier. And then we can go over here and say, okay, all feedback. So again, all feedback, and then first JSON combined feedback. Okay. So now we're returning from our workflow, the format we need. And if we go back here, we can add that tool, call a work node. I like to name everything here. So get feedback and we'll say get, this is what the AI agent reads to know what this tool can do. Get previous feedback. And I just used the ID. That's why I copied that, but it was there. Okay, cool. And we have a response and I need to send in that user ID. So we want to do user ID and then uh, user ID. And so now when it talks to our backend or our AI agent, it's going to use that. And I think I fixed the ID here. Yep. <clears throat> so I think we could probably run that. Oh, so I'll have to set up Postman. So let me go do that. Okay. So I added the feedback tool, I added the postman request, and I got an error. So let's go through this together. So I sent the simple postman request to say, hey, I want pizza on Friday night. It came in and got an error. I could go into the execution and look, I see an error here and here. Sorry, it's so unorganized. Like, why isn't that dragged over? When I click into it, it says the format's wrong. 
But more importantly, I go into the workflow and I see an error. This means it's a test, so I know it was me running it, but this is a real one. And then when we go in here, I realize, oh yeah, now that I've changed the structure, it's no longer the query, it's the JSON I gave it inside the query. So now I have to just fix this. So let's go do that. We'll debug in the editor. We'll unpin our previous data. We'll pop this open, and then we'll just now say, you know what, it's not here, it's, oops, query user ID. So now this would have gave a better response, and this would not have had the error. Let's just run it again. Let's save everything and make sure I save that because I always forget. And then let's hit Postman again. And let's see if it happens again. The, the point is um, I wanted to see the, see the error because like this stuff is easy to debug or it, it just makes it a lot easier. So we have another error. Let's go reload this so I don't have any history here. And we got the structured output. So again, we've made it through all these. We see that it got feedback. Let's see if we did a good job returning. So it, it has success, and we return the results, which is great. I don't do any JSON manipulation there, so just to keep that in mind, that looks like bad JSON to me. I don't know if that matters to N8N. It, let's keep looking. I'm curious. So then we go to here, and we go to uh, the output doesn't fit, and the output it's looking for is here, and it says, okay, Let's see, so Postgres chat, Anthropic, get feedback, chat. Yeah, it just didn't like how Anthropic handled the structured output. That's interesting. I would bet it's something to do with my tool. I don't think it's Anthropic. I'm going to throw in OpenAI here just to troubleshoot. I could use... Turbo, uh, I probably could even use 3.5 Turbo, I think. But let's go throw that again at it. <clears throat> now, even if you're coding this stuff, it takes a little bit of time. The smaller you break things down, the easier you can test just that one component. I don't know if I could break this one down any smaller for that particular part. And you can't watch the execution. Okay, so it says it updated it. So that means if we look at the past execution, we have success. It says it failed on updating the meal plan, so I'll have to go in and fix that. Obviously, I messed up this, so I'll have to go see what that is. I just added Postman. I'll come back to it after. But we see it did go get the feedback. It did use this guy the right way. Uh, let me reload this page. And it did all its things and returned feedback in the way we wanted to. I'll come back later and just do the same thing. Look in those logs because that's really nice. How do I fix this? Usually parameters, passing parameters, which we're all used to. Now... To fix it there, all I did was change the LLM. I don't know. Claude does a really good job. Lane chain in the background of, of N8N does a good job. So I'm not sure if that was just a one-off moment. It might happen so often that I could go back to Anthropic. But this is a nice part. I can divide all this stuff around. I could even try Grok and get the awesome speeds. But right now, for this video, this is where I'll leave it at. And I'm glad you got to see the ins and outs because it's nice to see how I troubleshoot it. As far as time-saving patterns go, you saw me using workflows, so you get a sense of how you can use those and then use them again and again. I have a workflow that searches the web. I have a workflow that will then get pages and scrape them. They're different workflows. I put them as tools or I put them as their own thing in a step in an API request. All right, so that's a deep dive. If you want to hear more, just subscribe, join the newsletter, get these deep dives, stay ahead of things and stay in and, and just get a sense of what I've been doing. There is also the training course, which you can sign up for, which is going to be videos I'm releasing that are that type of deep dive that will get you to the next level of just how to rethink how you approach these problems. And then you'll have access to me one-on-one -on -one so I can really help you rebuild things or rethink things and approach problems in a new way in a way that I think is key for us as developers moving forward so we can remain developers in many ways so we can hold the steering wheel on this and help guide it in the right direction until it doesn't need us to guide it. And that's about it. All right, thank you very much.